Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Smartphones and Cell Phones blog. Here with the Nokia N900. I've been writing quite a bit about this device over on my Nokia Expert site, but felt it was time for me to put something up on the ZDNet site since there's quite a bit of interest from my readers about this device. Um, so I'm going to look at a few things on the device, walk around, and um, then some other aspects of it that I've been using over the past couple months and uh, then close with some final thoughts. So this is the box itself. It's similar to the um, Nokia N97. kind of has the embossed image of the of the uh, N900. And this is the actual device, as you can see here. Um, this is primarily to be used in landscape mode. And so this is the main display. And over here we've got uh, a forward-facing camera, a proximity sensor, an indicator light, there's the head, headset speaker there, it says Nokia N900 up top, and um, I'll run through the software in a second here, just kind of wanted to show the hardware. Mm -hmm. So if I slide it up, there's our keyboard, and as I'll try to show here, um, it's a three row keyboard with directional pad, directional buttons, arrows, and the uh, space bar off center there, which to me, I've actually gotten used to it because as I type, my right thumb kind of lives in this area, which is kind of my navigation thumb. This one is uh, is typing, so that's pretty good, actually. So if we uh, take a look around the device, over on the left side, we see there's one of the stereo speakers, a micro USB slot for syncing and charging, um, and then a lanyard opening there. On the bottom, there's really nothing, but there is a stylus silo. Um, the stylus is an all-plastic, kind of a matte finish stylus. quite long, so it feels decent in the hand. I actually have only used it like two times and, and really didn't need to. Um, I always forget that there's even a stylus on there because the screen is actually quite good for uh, resistive. On the other side we've got the phone mic uh, there, headset jack 3.5 millimeter uh, lock button slider switch there, the other stereo speaker, and then around the top we've got an infrared port, we've got the camera activation button, got the power button and then we've got the volume toggle which is used for more than just the volume. And then zipping around the back we've got this matte finish black and we've got a 5 megapixel Carl Zeiss optics camera with, slide it open, dual LED flash there. And then we also have around the camera this is a flip kickstand. So you can actually prop it up and, uh, and watch movies um, with the device just kind of sitting on the table. So that's it for the hardware, all right? So let's uh, move around, and I'll take you kind of through the main interface. So these are what they call desktops, right? And now there's four of them, and you'll see I'll, I'll, roll, I'll rotate through them. Um, this one I have set up for web shortcuts. If I slide over here, you'll see this one is widgets. There's a weather widget. There's a, a Facebook widget, and this is a MyKu um, Twitter application widget. So there can be application widgets and then widgets built into the uh, the platform itself. This is my contact page and then sliding again this is kind of my application launcher. Right? So I've got email, contacts, phone, a Google Talk application, conversations, quick, YouTube, another Twitter app and then there's a widget over there for the calendar. If I was to tap and hold up top it gives me uh, the option to move things around so I can just tap on one move it around the display, set it up how I want to. If I tap up here, I have options for adding shortcuts, adding bookmarks, changing the background, changing the theme, add a contact, add a widget, manage the views. If I add a widget, you'll see there are some widgets here. Some are loaded by default and some are loaded by apps. If I go back up here, if I say manage views, you can actually choose to toggle on or off any of the three screens. And as you can see there, those are the particular backgrounds. So what you can actually have is wallpapers that are different for each of your four desktops. And I have all Christmas themed desktops uh, wallpapers on there at this time. Okay, so that's the main interface there. Now also in this desktop view, um, tap up top. This is kind of your uh, profile manager, your notifications, just a quick access to things. So there you can tap on profile and change them. Turn on the Bluetooth increase or decrease the brightness of the display, uh, change volume around up there. I guess I'll go ahead and put it on in case I want to play a little music for you or something. Uh, my availability I'll get into in just a second. There's internet connection. Right now I've got a Wi-Fi connection going on. If we tap clocks and alarm, it actually opens up the uh, a 
alarm utility here. Okay, so let's go back and uh, availability. If I tap on that, so there I can manage my availability, right? I can say offline, busy, or online, and then it has all my different services. So I can tap tap online, and then uh, I'll go ahead and do that because I'll show you that later. So let's go. Uh, on, I'll change my status to online as we go to the next thing. So now, uh, when I see it, when an email comes in, you'll see it appear over in the left. It kind of comes across the screen, and it moves over to the left as they come in, and then I can access them through the task manager. So a single press takes me to the task. Oops, went too far. Takes me to the task manager. All right, that yellow one up there was an email that came in. Uh, stupid build the bear workshop right there, um, and then you can see the other things that I have running. There's a, a web. Web browsers run in. There's the photo browser, media player, calculator, my coup, contacts, conversations, and phone. And on the web browser, if I open up multiple um, windows of web browsers, it appears here on the task manager. All right, so one more tap on the top left, and I'm taken to the application launcher. These are all what is included by default. Um, these can't be moved around, thrown into folders, anything like that. So I'll, in my review, I'll have a full list of everything that is included here. But as you can see, it's you know your web browser, your media player, calendar, um, camera, email, all kinds of things. If I tap on more, I'm taken to more of these uh, applications that are loaded, including on this page, there's games, RSS reader, and then down towards the bottom are ones that I've actually loaded: uh, the FM radio, um, my coup, Witter recorder, that kind of thing. So that's kind of how you get around the software, right? Now let me go into uh, has an accelerometer here. If I switch it over into uh, portrait, it should open up my phone utility. Okay, so there's the phone utility that I have. Now, one thing I want to show here is if I tap up on the top part, um, turning control, it has accounts. If I tap on my accounts here, this is going to let me manage the different accounts that I can connect to and interact and communicate with people with. Right, so it says view IP and IM accounts. It's going to pop up into landscape mode. So it's got my Skype, I've got Skype in there, Google Talk, OV, and also uh, Windows Live Messenger, right? And you can tap New, and you can set up these other accounts too. There's Jabber, MSN, and there is some other plugins in the uh, repositories for more of these services. These are just the ones that I happen to use. So the nice thing is, let's go back out. So let's just, uh, let's go to the carrier repair service. So if I tap on there, they give me options integrated with it, right? Call with Skype or, or call with the uh, with my cell phone. Now, if I have a particular contact that has Google Talk and all these other services, those options will all appear here too when I'm logged on. So I'll be able to in interact and contact people, communicate with people through all these different services, which is excellent. And I have to say, I've made multiple calls via Skype connected uh, via Wi-Fi with no SIM card in this device and the call sounded just like a standard Nokia phone call. High quality, no drops, no legs. It was a really fantastic experience. So even though this isn't really focused as a phone, it's a very good uh, VOIP phone in my opinion so far and uh, something that you know is a, is, is a differentiator from the previous internet tablets. So one of the strengths of this device is obviously the web browser. If we go to my site here, we'll be able to see that um, as it's loading up, that is, you will see this is the full site with no mobile version appearing. So as you can see, I can scroll around. And uh, the zooming is a bit odd. You can zoom with your finger by tapping and then circling in. But even easier is to just uh, find the, uh, if I close it, it's easier to browse. And if I press in, or zoom out with the uh, with the volume buttons actually. Okay, as you can see, you can zoom in quite a bit and zoom back out. But this web browser, one thing I like about the web browser actually is if I go down here into the uh, the URL area. Uh, let me just actually open up another site, another uh, tab that is. So if I just go into, uh, let's just say Twitter for now. 
But if I start typing a word, right, automatically opens up this little box for a Google search, and then you can just tap ZDNet, and then if I tap the G right there, it'll do a Google search automatically. So Google search is built into the browser itself, which is uh, which is quite nice. I'm connected right now to a T-Mobile connection in my house, so it's uh, showing that it's probably 3G, but it doesn't seem to be the fastest. I also do have my status live, so that could be uh, consuming some of the CPU as well. It's been, uh, I've been using this device for two months, as I said, and it probably needs a nice big reset. So there's the task manager back to there again. On the media player, oh, I just accidentally closed that. Let me go ahead and start the media player out. Just to kind of show you the media player, and if we look at the media player, you'll see that there's internet radio, music, uh, video content, and um, I've taken all of my movies, taken all my movies and put them on here so I can watch them. As you can see, that's the notification for an email that just came in. There's the music videos. If you tap on music, see that the goes by default to the album art. If I have it available, it'll show that. So there we go as far as that. And then if we tap on the so we can see there's some songs. If I tap on a song, it'll start playing it. And I believe I have the uh, the volume up as well. All right, so that's a little Christmas song. Tap over here. There you can see an email came in, and uh, what it appears like in the yellow. Um, one thing that's nice about this device is it has a. Uh, threaded conversation in uh, text messaging and instant messaging which is unlike uh, other Nokia devices that don't have uh, threaded messaging and as you can see over here it has some status of, uh, of my friends um, if they're online if they're with Skype or Ovi or wherever they happen to be so I can communicate with them if I'd like um, this is a uh, Twitter application called Witter it's uh, one of the better ones uh, as you can see the interface isn't completely cleaned up but it's getting better every every couple days um, it's uh, it's actually quite usable. Let me go ahead and I'm just going to show that. Okay. So bouncing back, um, one thing I wanted to show is the application manager. Now here's where you manage your apps. There's different catalogs that you you get. Right now the OV store is not open, so you have to use um, these repositories. Just for example, Mimo Extras. Uh, that's what it kind of looks like. And then you can uh, set up catalogs and then say download. It'll show you a bunch of categories. If I tap all, you'll see all the available apps. And as you can see, there's there's quite a few utilities and apps that, are, that actually are available in the different repositories for you to try out. Some of them don't quite work with the N900 yet. Some were made for the uh, previous N-series internet tablets. But there's quite a bit to play around with in there, and if you're if you're a person that's going to get this device, you're usually somebody that's going to you know hack around and play around and, and have some fun with some of that stuff, which I do. All right, let's go back out. Uh, what else do I want to show you on here? Well, that's about it for the device. I've I've taken several other videos. Just kind of wanted to give you a, a kind of a run through. Much more details in my written review after a couple of months of using the device and, and what I think about it. And, as I said in that review too, I actually ended up purchasing my own one a couple days ago because this review unit has to go back to Nokia here in a couple weeks. So I'm looking forward to trying out my own Nokia N900. And uh, you can find it, you know, for about $550. Um, it's a SIM unlock device, works with 3G on T-Mobile. And that's a look at the Nokia N900.